online news crackdown from the government. The government has decided to respond to the Cancross review. The Cancross review was written at the beginning of last year, around February, by Frances Cancross. She said that mainstream media, particularly print media, is facing an existential threat from the internet. She said that advertising is now going online, is killing local journalism and therefore local democracy. So online advertising is killing local democracy. And that is without even talking about Cambridge Analytica, Brexit and Trump. What she's saying is we need to get people to pay for news. And adverts used to be the way news were f was funded. So if you think of a newspaper as performing two functions, giving you information about the community in which you live, and then also telling you about the products and services that are available, and there would always be a loyalty to the people who pay more money, and that would be the people who pay for the adverts. Because if you have to pay £18,000 for a one-page advert in The Guardian, then you're more likely to have greater clout than the person who gives £2.20 every day. Even though there are far more people giving £2.20 every day, it is a simple rule that those people who give you £18,000 for a single advert have more influence over you because they individually give you more money. You need more of those people to keep the thing up and running and you can take the readers for granted or at least that is how things appear to have been going. And then you have the government influence on the newspaper, which is also undeniable. So these are the various things that are at play. The Cancross Review, as I said, was done at the beginning of last year, and it was designed to look at these relationships. How do you save local democracy wasn't its specific objective, but it was basically what it was talking about, because it was saying, how do you save local journalism? The local journalism scene has virtually died. Some people say the BBC helped to kill it. Some people say Rupert Murdoch helped to kill it. Press barons brought about a situation where the national press carried on, even though people weren't necessarily even buying that many papers. The internet was a brilliant place to get information. And then suddenly information about local politics was no longer being shared, which meant that, of course, the local politicians and businesses were able to get away with a lot more corruption. And the fact that the corruption goes unchecked means that there is a lot less social justice. There is a lot more inequality. There is a lot more bullying. There is a lot more abuse. And all of these things happen and it just gets worse and worse. The government response to the Cancross Review was issued on Monday night. And on Tuesday morning, there was a story in the Daily Mail on page two, talking about the online news crackdown that the government were planning in order to create a code of conduct that would bring about a fairer deal for journalists. I think that's what they were saying. Interesting, of course, that Boris Johnson is a former journalist and that he receives, probably still receives plenty of royalties from his books. But until very recently, he was being paid £20,000 a month by the Daily Telegraph. So he's very interested in the influence of newspapers. In a Vanity Fair article in 2004, when he edited The Spectator, he told Michael Wolff, the biographer, the unauthorised biographer, of Trump, or at least Trump's time in the White House, he told him that at the time he was considering buying The Spectator, he was ultimately unsuccessful, and he told Michael Wolf, if it turns out that a foreign press baron buys the paper, he said, I am prepared to be Vichy-like. The Vichy administration was the fascist administration that ran France in World War II. So Boris Johnson said he was prepared to be Vichy-like, as in to have, he said, to flatter shamelessly. So basically, Basically, he's saying that he's got no morals at all, prepared to sell anyone out in his pursuit of power. The Cancross Review response from the government was announced on Monday night. It was in the Mail on Tuesday. In The Guardian, they put a story on the website on Monday night, but 
they didn't put anything in the newspaper. There are other media stories going on at the moment, that's true, but it's interesting that they didn't put it in. So the page that they had on the internet has a picture of Nicky Morgan on it, and it says that the public interest news organisation that Francis Cancross had recommended, which would have helped promote local journalism, and it would have helped fund the type of deeper investigative journalism that this country needs. The government said that they weren't interested in that, and the excuse Nicky Morgan gave, or the reason, the rationale, was that public interest reporting would violate press freedom, it would undermine press freedom. So there you go. If the government are to fund something that is important and is doing research for the public, then that undermines freedom. That's the logic. But what is press freedom? Press freedom is freedom to the person who owns the newspaper. There is a famous quote, never argue with a man who buys his ink by the barrel. Basically, if you own a newspaper, you can get away with anything. It's almost like owning a bank, isn't it? And media and banking are Fleet Street, the city, the courts... They're all in the same place for a reason, and that is because public opinion has to be managed. If everybody knows about something, then it becomes accepted, and the quicker you can get everybody knowing about something, accepting it, controlling the narrative, then you can apply that narrative in society, in the courts, and also in business, because then everybody knows this is what's acceptable, this is what's respectable, and you just carry on with your business the way you want to. Whether you're a good person or not, you can get away with bad things if you control public opinion. So interesting the way in which Nicky Morgan has said public interest broadcasting goes against press freedom. What about the BBC? Is that public interest broadcasting? Clearly not, because if it were, Nicky Morgan would say it goes against press freedom. Now maybe she has a problem with it though, because it is cutting down on the number of journalists it has in its news department. The Victoria Derbyshire show is being eliminated and at the same time, the Times are introducing, introducing their own version of Radio 4, which is going to be free and without adverts. So they are trying to rival the BBC in terms of their news output by going into audio. There are other talk radio channels that Rupert Murdoch's News UK owns. I think Talk Radio and Talk Sport both quite right wing and of course they're now going to try and do the same thing like a Fox radio with their Times offering. Giles Corrin is going to be one of the people who has a show. I don't suppose he is the worst of all of the columnists and talk show hosts in the country but he's pretty bad, pretty bad. So this is the country's drift towards the right wing politically and it's happening whilst these contradictions are occurring. Public interest broadcasting is against press freedom. So that means press freedom is not public interest. Or is it a case of government funded public interest? But again, that's the BBC. Last year when Jeremy Corbyn said he wanted to give broadband to everybody, the BBC referred to it as broadband communism. And some people say, well, what's the BBC? The BBC itself is a form of socialism, isn't it? Because it's a national broadcaster supposedly in the public interest. But these definitions of the public interest are, shall we say, they're getting watered down or denatured. They're being completely subverted so that now what is in the interest of a press baron is more important than the public interest. And the press baron gets to determine what the public interest is. And if you have something that is supposedly democratising, like the internet, in which people can talk to each other and gain influence and opinions can grow, that is also to be cracked down on. So this Cairncross review, I thought was brilliant in terms of what I saw. What's being done to it, how it's being instrumentalised, is a completely different story. The points it made about local journalism will, unfortunately, not be followed up on it. There's going to be a single £2 million fund, the Nesta Fund, which is to promote some type of journalism. It's not very much. In the end, the influence of the press barons goes on, and I'm sure the internet giants who are supposedly being taken on will just have to pay a fraction of the tax that everyone else pays. And independent journalism, I'm quite sure. Journalism that is critical of the government, I'm quite sure, will be attacked.